Welcome, Mr. Ty Beard. Howdy. Well, I'd ask how do, but I think I know the answer. Yeah, well, I didn't get much sleep tonight, so I was watching your show. Thought it was a very fair uh, analysis, and uh, yeah, it's my fault. Of course, it is. I, I was the leader of the team. I made the, I made all the strategic decisions. My people did a good job. You know, um, basic principle of leadership: the leader takes the blame. That's the way it has to be for leadership to work. But. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought actually your analysis was pretty spot on. I don't have a lot of answers to some of those questions. I've got to meet with the team tomorrow and break this down further. But um, you know, the public figure uh, part is 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 tough, and I do think the I, I do think the court of appeals muff that because the uh, opinions out there make it very clear that you to be a public figure you've got to be broadly popular in the entire community, you know. Right. And so we'll, and we, I'm sure we'll file a motion to reconsider. That's where you ask the court to just, you say, look, we think you did this wrong, that wrong, the other thing wrong, please reconsider. You know, <laughs> what, what often happens when you do that is the court will say, you know, you're right, but you still lose. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's the hard um, part about a motion to can reconsider. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I mentioned that in response to the, um, the rule 11, here the rule 11 ruling which i personally think is a i i don't see how uh you you're a contracts guy yeah you, i i drafted people, the rule 11 do you think it, there's any coincidence that the petition is not in that so he um he, <laughs> I mean, people don't know this because like there's a meme that you're just an estate attorney but you're a commercial attorney as well you do all sorts of and do both right. litigation and transactions. Now that it's unusual to find attorneys that are that broad, but yeah, I mean, you know, but so uh, you, you deal with the <laughs> contract law with relative frequency. And my, my issue with the court, my biggest issue with this court decision, um, which I mean, I, when you lose the second amended petition, I see their decision, right? I yeah. like, I got it. Yeah. Uh, and, and there, I might nitpick here and there, but ultimately, I think the the second amended petition well, was was the most important part of the case. Yeah, I agree. Um, the, the there's no gainsaying it. The no, the notary foul up was uh, that was pretty bad, and that was on me. You know. Uh, by the way, can you send me a link to the chat? I can't actually see the chat. I was, oh yeah. I don't know. Maybe I don't. Where want do you want? Do you want but, me to send it? Do you want me to email it or do you want me to send it? Uh, I guess email it. Yeah. That, that okay. Be, hold on. Well, hold on. Uh, so, of course, Outlook has crashed. I can send it to you on Messenger or whatever. Just email. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, this should, this should um, work. Yeah. You know, um, I. <laughs> I'm one of those uh, folks that takes every loss very, very personally. You're not supposed to do that. You know, they tell you old, old, old veteran lawyers tell you, you know, you, you can't do that. I do I always have. And I don't suppose I'll be changing anytime soon. And this one's tough uh, because Vic didn't deserve this. And, you know, um, that's, you know, what do you want to say? I mean, uh, of course, there are various people in there gloating, but as you very correctly pointed out, we never got our day in court. We never got to the evidence. Um, and what evidence we do have, watch the damn depositions. What rational person actually believes the defendants? I mean, you know, man, I don't know why, but all of a sudden, Outlook is blowing up. Hold on. Everybody's emailing you at the exact same time. <laughs> yeah, probably so. Probably so. Let me see here. Uh, I'm going to do this thing where I send you a message on Facebook and uh, yeah, you can, you do can, that. You can, you can do just that. click on it on your computer and yeah. it will give you like hey, this let's... magical thing will happen where the window just pops up for you. Well, you know, you say that. Let's see if that can. Oh, are we live, by the way? We're live. Yeah, we're very live. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. Okay. There it is. Uh, let's see. I got a duck down under my, uh, ah, there we go. There's the chat. All right. Now I can, now I can function. I oh, mean, I guess I, that's, that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I, uh, uh, you know, 
after COVID, of course, a good chunk of my every day now is spent on Zoom. And so I've always got the best camera and microphone of, <laughs> of everybody on Zoom. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. Even though it's it's potato cam in reference to my magnificent. Well, of course. Sure, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm three years behind you. That's a lot well, of forehead, don't... Ty. Yeah. Yeah. People don't realize with like uh, with lawyers on like Zoom and stuff, which your average thing is a laptop from 2009 and it's camera and, and microphone. Oh. And they're just yelling at the screen because they don't even oh, have yeah. headphones in. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. 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 That's another thing. You know, Zoom, no headphones, although Zoom works OK for business meetings. But, yeah, there's a lot. It's, it's a lot like a seance. You know, you're, you're, you're trying. Are you there? Can you hear me? Are you muted? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, you know, well, what do you, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know what, what there is for you to say about the, the case or the appeal, but what do you, what would you want to say? I mean, well, what's I the, mean the main thing, thing I want to say is uh, confirm your prediction that I would take responsibility. Absolutely. It's my fault. You know, that's, that, that's just, you know, uh, it would be very, uh, uh I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna that's gonna shirk responsibility. Never have been. Um, you know how do you how do you look at your children? You know if you if you blame somebody else or throw other people under the bus. And sure, you can always find failures in the chain, but the reality is you pick those people. You know, and you supervise them, and so it's at the end of the day still your responsibility. But. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely, I, I think it's almost certain we're going to file a motion to reconsider. Um, that's a, we got 15 days from the time of the opinion. We're going to certainly ask for uh, extra time because I've, this thing drops right in the middle. I've got another trial actually, uh, week out Monday after next. So, uh, sure. You know, we <laughs> will, I would, I would anticipate the court will grant that, uh, the odds are not great for us because, uh, our arguments, one of the problems with our arguments are if they grant our arguments, they're going to have to do a whole lot more work. Yeah. Because by, you know, by a priori excluding the, the, our evidence, basically, um, you know, if they say, Oh, you know, you're right. We, we shouldn't have done that. Well now. Then they have to redo the analysis. Yeah. And so I, I, you know, I mean, they should, <laughs> in my opinion, but I think it's problematic. I saw in the chat some people were talking about the Supreme Court, Texas Supreme Court. Um, the Texas Supreme Court takes a very tiny percentage of cases that are appealed to it. So our decision there is going to be more a function of economics, you know, because the legal fees continue to mount. And so I wouldn't read anything into whatever decision we come up with. Uh, some folks in there asked, have I talked to Vic? Yes. Of course, I called him immediately. And, you know, he... He wasn't happy. I don't think anybody would expect that, but he'll be fine. He's, you know, he's a tough guy and, and he's been through a lot. Um, I just, uh, yeah, you know, I think it's just, pretty fair. Up short. I think it's pretty fair to say he's a complete, I shouldn't say completely. He's a very different person than he was in 2019 when this was happening. I mean, he's been, he's been tempered by uh, this, this campaign against him in in many ways and yeah. and i think in a lot of ways he's probably stronger oh well i don't think you could go through this and still be alive without being stronger um but you know um somebody in the chat uh compared me to eddard stark <laughs> maybe <laughs> i'll always take a comparison to sean bean <laughs> but yeah but just remember his head ended up on a spike <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah no um i couple of things and, and this this isn't in the nature of you know me trying to defend myself or anything just just clarification um i was not particularly nice to those folks um there were certain things that you know you do as you know you, you do because you think it's a better strategic play to make i felt like this judge was not a big fan of you know what i call lawyer bullshit and he gave every indication of that so you know i went with that uh yeah, the, 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 the hearing was, was just surreal. Um, and what you have to remember is uh, when you got a hostile judge, that's just, you know, pounding you, you know, you can, you can 
go along with it to some degree to try to calm him down so that you can reason with him or you can just get in his face. Well, I tried both. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, getting well, in his face worked better, but I didn't find that out until, you know, yeah, that, I, that's generally considered a very risky strategy. I didn't talk about it on this stream, but I do remember talking about it in the past that that hearing was such a weird, like, again, um, judges act in semi predictable ways. That hearing came out of left field in a lot of them. And uh, the first half of the fear of the hearing was completely different from the second half. And there was a distinct shift in strategy. At first you were kind of conciliatory. Unfortunately, as it happens, um, a lot of that sort of conciliatory stuff revolved around some of the issues that I think became the most important, mm -hmm. the admission of the second amended petition and stuff like that. So like the, the way the appeals court characterized some of the statements that were made in court are in the context of a context of that conciliatory nature. What ended up yeah. happening in the second half of the hearing was different. And there, there really isn't any quotations from it, but that's kind of because you were actually communicating with judge Chupp at that point a little bit. Well, more effectively. I, I'd gotten to the point where I decided I didn't care if I got tasered uh, right. because, because being conciliatory had failed miserably. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> And Lee uh, asked for a five minute break. I don't know if you remember. Uh, and, and we walked out and, you know, and I'm just sitting there and he says, calm down, catch your thoughts. This isn't working. I said, yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that was a, that was a heads up play by him. Look, my, my team, the, the, they're good lawyers. They're very good lawyers, you know? So uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, you know, one way ratchet. Had we won, I would have given them the lion's share of the credit because they did do you know, such a good job. But uh, at, at the end of the day, it's my fault. Um, you know, <laughs> the, I have rarely in the practice, in fact, I can't really ever think of any time where I said, you know, I don't want to practice law anymore. And I'm not saying that now, although I've probably drifted closer <laughs> to that tonight. Uh, because the, the really, to anybody that's going to go to law school, you know, one of the things that you have to understand is, if you fail, whether you screwed up, the court got it wrong, whatever, doesn't really matter. Or even your client blew it, doesn't really matter. If you fail, your client suffers. Yep. And, you know, I, I, I have a hard time reconciling that because, you know, I, 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 would t I would take that bullet in a heartbeat. But you can't. John T. Ty is backpedaling. Oh, I guess, I guess he <laughs> oh, got that the, I, yeah, I think he got the dick out of his mouth. No, hey, it's still there. <laughs> hey, 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 John T., you should probably think about how absolutely pathetic and useless you are that you actually care about this. You know, I, I would be mad at you, but I, I feel sorry for you, you sad, pathetic piece of shit. So see, I'm not I'm not completely big down. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, biting off more than I can chew. No, no, we had we had all the firepower we needed. You know, look, in, in trials, mistakes will be made by both sides. I mean, that and, and there were on both sides. That's, you know, that that kind of evens out, you know, generally, usually. Right. Uh, we just uh, now, you know, I got to admit the idea that 270 or 300 defamatory tweets somehow need context is just I almost I almost fell out of my chair when I read that. So we're going to obviously attack that. In our, in our motion. Yeah, because some of them have an obvious facial defamatory meaning. Yeah. Like when it says, when it says Vic Mignogna assaulted four women, for example, like that's doesn't seem to require contextual, like I, I'm not sure what context would grant to that personally. Um, that seems to be a per se defamatory statement according to the court's own definition that it cites in the opinion. Yeah, but yeah, I, that 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 caught me by surprise. The characterization of him of uh, as a, as a public figure, though, and and this is I'm I'm not trying to get myself off the hook. I'm just making a clinical assessment here. If he's a public figure, we would have lost that case regardless, because as you well know, it's damn near impossible to reach the bird, especially at the stage we are in the TCPA, where you're not even allowed to collect evidence. And and we're gonna you know we're gonna point that out to the court too that they're holding us to a standard that is impossible. You didn't produce evidence to prove this. Well, we couldn't. 
we, we were we were denied discovery. In fact, the only reason we got the depositions, uh, I'll, I'll brag a little bit, was because I stormed into the end of the court and asked for a hearing and and, chal and said they're planning on deposing my client and filing a TCP and that ain't right. And Chuck looked at a Chuck looked at opposing counsel and said, "Are you going to do that?" And the poor guy goes, "Well, no, of course not." And he goes, oh, okay. Well, in that case, I rule that everybody can be deposed before you file the TCPA. So Chuck made some good rulings early on. Um, you know, I just, the, 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 the hearing just didn't go the way we wanted it. And uh, Bronca's right. Uh, by definition, appeals are for losers. You know? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, because <laughs> if you yeah, win, you're yeah. not appealing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the, uh, but that statement doesn't get us very far. Because, you know, I said this, gosh, has it been three years, Nick? It's three years. It's hard for me to, like, I always I think of it as two, but it was actually three well, years ago. Basically, the 2020 disappeared for everybody because of COVID. But uh, I said this three years ago, the night I was down on the coast, uh, when we when we got Chuck's ruling, and I said, oh, yeah, we're going to fight. Um, that's what you do. You know, you, <laughs> you don't just go, well, you know, we got beat. I guess it's over. I mean, that's not, at least that's not how I do it. And I, I don't think I'll ever change that about my personality. Um, so I asked why it took so long now that it's out. I, well, if you want to know how long it took for the appeals opinion, that's easy. Uh, COVID, COVID, utter, COVID utterly, fucked everything up. It really did. I mean, we, you know, we've got, we've got trials that we would have had set in 2020 that we still can't get set. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're, it's uh it, it, it's <laughs> you know uh but but yeah COVID is the answer it was a complicated case um, somebody asked in there too what would you have done differently well i'll be i'll be making that list over, over the next few few days um you know uh there were some screw-ups that I, I would avoid uh probably miss i should i should have had i should have i should have put vic in the courtroom for that hearing um, I, you know, I, I had the obvious, if they concerns. would let you, if they would let you call him as a witness that no, I think, well, yeah, it, even his presence though, might've, I mean, cause you know, Vic's, Vic's a very, uh, engaging person and he puts a face on, he, pu he puts a face on the damage. Um, I did it. I did it for reasons that are, uh, that, 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 that were logical at the time, but in hindsight, I, I, you know, I would do that different cause I know I have a better feel for how he is in the courtroom. Um, you know, we overplayed it. I mean, a little bit. We, you, you know, you get bloodlust when you're when you're drawing up these 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 things. That particular mistake isn't really material because you know, great. We would we should have played fourteen instead of seventeen. What are you gonna do? Um, so yeah, you know, I I always try to learn. I find that I've learned far more from my failures than I ever learned from my successes. And so yeah, this will be a learning experience. Um, as far as, uh, you know, as far as what happens to Vic, well, yeah, I'll fight for the guy to the end of time at this point, um, and won't charge him a dime. So assuming he, you know, still wants me, um, you know, it'll get made right one way or another that, that that's a personal promise that I'll make. Uh, it'll get, it'll, it'll get, it'll get made right. Um, you know, but the, uh, it's the notary issue tie. Yeah, no shit. Didn't we just, I, I think Nick said that three times. I've said it twice. Uh, appreciate you saying it a sixth time moron. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> I understand. I'm not bitter because of the fat. Well, I am bitter because of the failure, but understand I'm calling you an idiot because you're acting like an idiot. Um, and you people gloating about this. Let me, let me, let me clue you in on some things. Number one, Vic Mignogna is a far better person than either of the defendants. Okay. He is and always will be far more people like him than will ever like any of them. Uh, opposing counsel can gloat all they want, but they want a technical victory. It never reached the merits. I never got to a jury. We never got to make our case. So you can't say, yay, we want a technical merit. See, he's guilty. That's bullshit. So gloat all you want to. I, I would consider how pathetic, Pathetic you are sitting here, you know, yeah, yeah, you lost. Yeah, no shit. I've been doing this 27 years. It happens, you know. 
Um, but to other people, I would say this, this is how you act when you take, when you take a hit, you take responsibility for it. You try to figure out what you can do about it. You don't blame other people. You don't whine about it. You know, you know, I wasn't curled up in a fetal ball. I just couldn't sleep. I was, <laughs> I actually got to listening to your analysis was, and was kind of, you know, mentally taking notes for the conversation. Well, okay, yeah, that's a good point. And I thought, eh, you know, I can't, I can't sleep anyway. So <laughs> yeah. Um, well, do you have any uh, questions? I mean, that's, I mean, I, I don't really, the stuff, the stuff that I have questions about is really inside, you know, it's stuff that I can't know. So yeah. I don't really yeah. want to, I don't want to get into that stuff. I don't want any appearance that I would know any of that stuff. Um, the How many times do you have to say I'm not his lawyer? Um, always, and, 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 and always way, one more. I think, I, I don't think I'm disclosing anything I shouldn't by saying this one thing. Nick made the introduction, then got off the phone call. And I spoke with Vic for two hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, the idea that you somehow, you know, orchestrated all this, I mean, it, it, just, it just didn't go down that way. If you remember, I was going out to a client's location, uh, just the weird things that happened. Um, uh, the uh, immigration folks had shown up at a manufacturing company's plant. And of course, they did exactly what they were supposed to and called me before they let them in. So I was heading out to deal with that. And so I took the call and then dealt with that and then called Vic back. So no, uh, Glick, uh, Vic, you know, Vic hired me uh, because he, you know, thought I could do the job. He had a previous lawyer. I don't know if you remember that. I um, do. I remember. She was, she, I, I kind of liked her. I talked to her. She, you know, I don't know that her personality was really quite wired to, to, to handle this kind of a case, but, and she admitted that, I mean, well, this is not disparager in any way. I thought, I thought that the work she did initially was very good. I, I called and complimented her on that and asked her if she wanted to have any kind of continuing role, because, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm, uh, the more the merrier is kind of my philosophy. So, um, but no, you, you didn't orchestrate anything. And no, I'm not. Well, I guess, you know, in a sense, I am your family attorney to the extent that I represent a number of your family members on a variety of matters, but I'm not sure that what that has to do with anything. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, who do you recommend for an attorney? Well, I could, I could recommend someone who has done work for my family, or I could recommend someone who has done no work for anybody well, I know did, at all. You literally just made the introduction. Um, yeah. There was no, I mean, you need a lawyer in Texas. Well, you know, he's in Texas and he's only an hour and a half away from you, you know? Um, you know, so. Uh, I can't yeah. wait till I get sued like that. That will be the funny day I'm for all, me. Yeah. Yeah. We ought, if we they, ought to think it. If they sue me for a negligent referral, I'm going to have a blast. That'll be it. Negligent that'll be referral. That's an, well, again, I go back to the advice I gave that Doug Dynasty lawyer so many years ago. Don't bleep with this guy. Just don't. <laughs> you know? um, yeah. Uh, somebody asked me where I was during anime Matsuri. Man, I wanted to go to that so bad, but I'm working on a big business deal. And so, of course, it heated up, you know, uh, right, you know, and I was like, ah. So I want to, you know, so, so yeah, I, I really did want to go and see all you guys, but you know, you know, next, uh, next year, next year, yeah, um, yeah. someone, someone said that this case is the biggest, uh, the biggest, was it the biggest failure or biggest L of my entire life? Hold on. Let's see what do we got. This case is the biggest L of Nick's life, which I'll take it. Absolutely. That's great. If this is the biggest L of my entire life, I'm, I'm in a good spot. I, I I've never been this disappointed. I mean, this is. Is it the, I mean, is, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, super disappointed, I, I, but I like, to, but yeah. I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's not your fault. So it's kind of like, I'll take, yeah, that's too I'll, bad, but <laughs> I'll take the L for other people's issues all yeah, the time. It's, it's, yeah. If that's the worst um, thing that ever happens to me, holy shit, I'm charmed. Well, you know, you ask yourself these questions whenever you take it and, and I don't take very many hits. I mean, I'm not bragging. It's just a statement of fact. And so, you know, this one's, I can't remember a more disappointing uh, hit than this. It, and, it uh, sucks. It, it sucks. really does. And, and, and Vic didn't deserve this. You know? There's no, uh, there's no way around it. When you, when you get an outcome for a client that is not what you're after, it sucks. Cause you, 
you yeah. develop relationships with these people. It's not just well, like public defenders have a different sort of role, right? Like they get 300 cases. They deal with these people from time to time. And sure, there might be a case or two that stands out every now and then for them. But like private attorneys get hired by someone. You develop a relationship with them. They, they get to know you. They get to know your family. You get to know their family. You get to know their situation. You get to know what their hopes and dreams are. You get to know what their fears are. And then when shit comes crashing down, I mean, that's that's like having that happen to a, at worst, a cousin, but more yeah. likely something akin to a sibling or a kid. It, like, Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I mean, yeah, Vic's a friend. Uh, we, we've become very good friends. And, uh, you know, how do you tell a very good friend I failed? You know, that's tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, kind of did already, but I will again. But, you know, it's, 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 it's brutal. But, I mean, this, this job is a serious job. You know, it, it's not, it, you're, you're, you're dealing with people's lives. You're dealing with people's, you know, ass, everything. I mean, it, it's not a game. Um, now, you know, I tend to see it kind of as a game because I'm a gamer as a hobby hobbyist, but it's it's not a game. Uh, I will definitely pass on the thoughts to Vic. Um, you know, we'll um, you know, I, we'll do whatever we can. We I have to get my team together tomorrow. And, you know, of course, these appeals decisions dropping literally out of the blue. Uh, you know, yeah. it. it, it uh, we're not going to be able to talk until the early afternoon, but we'll have we'll have a game plan by tomorrow afternoon late. Um, but yeah, it, this is you know I, I would say this I, I would ask everybody to pray for for Vic. You know, um, got a yeah. little extra. Pray that you know that me and my team have wisdom because we're going to need it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, but but like I said, uh, you know. Vic's a great guy. He didn't deserve this. He didn't do it, you know. And yeah, that's uh, the that's the takeaway from you know, all of and, this. And, and, that's and so you, frustrating, and, you know. And, and these pieces of shit in here that are gloating over that, it's like you prove nothing, you know. I mean, <laughs> I, I I would genuinely be curious as to what you're actually gloating about, because I don't think you've even even thought it through, um, you know. So. I'm just glad that in Texas I can call anybody a sexual predator, uh, and and that that's not defamatory. Just remember well, as that in Texas as, we have con, we have constitutional carry, though. So. It's got to be a. Well, it's got to be. <laughs> you don't want to do that on Twitter. You're not going to want to do that face to face. It's it's just got to be a public figure in a matter of public concern. You can be made a public oh. figure very quickly if the public concern is sexual harassment allegations. So like or like domestic abuse. So like I can say that Ron Toye the third publicly acknowledged in court documents as a wife beater, um, that he is, he's a wife beater. And I think that personally, my opinion, uh, based on all sorts of shit I've seen about Ron Toye the third is that not only is he a wife beater, but he's probably a sexual predator as well. Like I'm, I'm relatively confident saying that because he, he tries to manipulate women by giving them gifts. He dated someone who he was the landlord of, which seems very, very suspect, giving laptops to women he barely knows. And also, he sent me a bunch of sexual DMs. They they seem sexual to me, so I think okay. he's a sexual predator. Never thought I'd say this in public, but you. <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just here. I'm just a person on... YouTube or whatever. And then I find out that this Ron Toye guy is like watching my YouTube videos and starts sending me creepy sexually charged messages. Yeah. That's uh well, very, uh, <laughs> very much a sexual predator. Uh, HM toy gives a groomer vibe. <laughs> that's an interesting statement. Uh, um. Well, um, I don't, I don't want to keep you too long. I don't want to stay yeah. too long. It's already, yeah. 2 a.m. I think what I'm going to do is finish up super chats uh, okay. and then, and then wrap up the show. Is there anything you wanted to say uh, to not anybody? Really. I mean, not really. I just, I, I wanted to, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to make it clear this, that, you know, this was not Vic's fault. Uh, I will say one more thing about depositions, by the way. Um, uh, I saw a lot of the chat saying, you know, you should prepare your witness better. Um, you do, but look, the, uh, 
what people need to understand something very critical about my my critique of Vic's deposition. It's really easy to say that mm -hmm. someone under cross examination from an attorney, attorneys are interviewers who are have a specific motivation that you don't necessarily know. It's really easy for me to say he should have said this. He should have said that this could have happened differently. That could have happened differently. Well, fucking yeah, of course it could in an ideal yeah. world. But the, the reason yeah. lawsuits happen is because no one is ever fully prepared for the ideal. Uh, there's, there's, you can do all the prep in the world, but the reality is simple. This is why police work. People want to tell their stories yeah. and they want to tell them the way they normally tell yeah. their stories. You give all clients the same advice and you hammer them on this. You say, answer the question, just the question. <laughs> you know, And, and, you know, we, we actually war gamed. I mean, we, uh, and Lee, we role played the deposition and Lee did a great job as, in fact, he did a better job than Lemoyne did. Uh, in the role playing to make, you know, cause, cause a lot of times in depositions, you know, it's the shock of hearing something that you're not expecting that unravels a witness. So anytime I've got somebody going into a, a deposition where it really matters, we actually will do a mock deposition. You know, we'll, we'll, I'll get one other lawyer to be, to be the opposing counsel and their job is to try to rattle the client. Um, so, you know, we, we did all that, but, but, you know, Vic, Vic won't tell a story. And of course, one of the problems you run into is when the question is asked and your client starts answering it, maybe a little too much, you're not allowed to object. You can't, <laughs> you can't just say, stop, <laughs> time out. Yep. Um, and I found that through experience and somebody said, this is my first deposition. No. Uh, I, I think what I said was I prefer to, I preferred to let other lawyers who are better at it. Uh, I tend to ramble, you know, I mean, I, but no, that wasn't my first deposition. I've given uh, any number of them since then. Uh, in fact, I gave one shush, two weeks ago uh, in, in, in case we're going to trial on pretty soon. Uh, but uh, I find that criticizing a client during the deposition, like when you take a break, usually does more harm than good because they're right. already, they're already wound up. You know, and so I generally try to say it's OK, you're doing all right. Just, you know, you might want to think about but I, I low key it because you don't want to, you know, you don't you don't want to just get them so tight if they go in and freak out. Uh, Ty paid Vic for being his client. No, no. Although I, you know, <laughs> I probably would have represented him no matter what, because he is a great guy. Um, I. I remember very distinctly uh, the drive home after I went to meet him face to face and my law partner called and said, you know, what do you think? And I, and I said this half jokingly, I said, well, I hope he's got some money cause I, I'm going to, I'm going to help him even if he doesn't, <laughs> you know, and Don goes, have I told you I love you lately? I was like, yeah, okay. That's, that, that's enough. <laughs> um, but, uh, Ty has been doing depots since 1998 BC. Yeah. It sometimes seems like it. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, to anybody who's wanting to go to law school or wanting to, uh, you know, uh, be a lawyer or anything like that, this is a, this is a learning, this is a, a teachable moment for y'all. Everybody loves it when they win, you know, um, everybody doesn't take any, any skill at all to enjoy a win, but I've always felt like how you, how you, how you deal with adversity speaks much more about about your strength and your character than how you deal with a win. By the way, I, you know, it's kind of academic now, but I remember you and I talking about it. I had no intention of gloating it whatsoever if we had won. I just, uh, I didn't fit, you know, we just weren't going to, going to do that. I figured you would. <laughs> no, I would. Oh, I yeah. was, yeah. God, I was hoping it would happen. Uh, yeah. Tonight's, tonight's well, very, look, it ain't, not... it ain't, it ain't quite over yet. Okay. I don't want anybody to get anybody's hopes up, but we, we haven't thrown every single punch we can throw. And so we're, I've got some very smart guys on my team. We'll, we'll figure it out. If there's, if there are angles, we're certainly going to take a crack at it. Um, like I said, you know, I, and there was a dissent in this case. I haven't gotten to the dissent yet. So bear in mind is it's two best. Yeah, I, haven't, I haven't seen the dissent either. Well, it's dissent yeah. and concurrence. I don't know what he dissented on when he concurred on, but yeah. Um, so, you know, a reconsider motion might not be quite as much of a forlorn hope because all you got to do is, is flip one of the judges theoretically instead of, you know, two. 
Here, this uh, this super chat's relevant. It says, "Hey Nick, do you think you would have done better than Ty if you were Vix Council? Be honest, flex if you need to." Lol. Yes, a hundred percent. Absolutely. I, done, I think you would have done better than me, Nick. So. I've done a much better job. <laughs> of course, you I would have. I would have made zero mistakes. I would have typed everything perfectly the first just, time. You know, no typos. I, no. Yeah. No. The I, judge. The judge would have actually offered to give me sexual favors. Yeah. He program. he would have just simply said to you, "What do you want me to do, counsel?" And I would have said, "Oh, said, we win." The depths of my imagination are uh, so deep. Go, That's so it is ordered, and that would have been the end of it. Yeah, listen, I mean, I've, I've said this to you, I think, on your show. I'll certainly say this to your audience. You're a hell of a lawyer. I, I would. Uh, I tried. You remember, I offered you a job. Yeah. <laughs> but you're like, I don't want to move to Texas. <laughs> I don't want to live in Texas. Yeah. Actually, no, that's not true. I would love to live in Texas. I don't think I'll ever be able to end up living in Texas. Yeah. That's that. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, sorry, go over the Super Chats. And I forgot that was the purpose of the exercise. Yeah. Uh, Jason McConnell says lost his first case ever last month. Nurse sued COVID obsessed judge says nurses equals heroes. My father sued the judge and won 30 years ago. Sometimes you get that judge got mm. the award cut in half. Good mm. judge calling me viscerally repugnant priceless. Yes. <laughs> you can, you oh. can be evaluated by the people that hate you. Yeah. Uh, Jack Riley says for Ty, what is an item that you enjoy? What makes you happy to get low price to high as well? Please don't beat yourself up too much. Please be well. Well, thank you for the kind thoughts. What, what is an item I enjoy low to high? Yeah. Something you enjoy getting. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, that's kind of hard to answer, uh, specifically. I don't know why, but it is. Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I have a number of hobbies. So anything related to those hobbies, gaming, uh, sci-fi, uh, history. Butt plugs? Uh, no. Um, Cock you know, rings? No. <laughs> you don't want those? Like, what about, I don't even uh, know what those are, and I, and I don't really want... What about them. lubricant? Like various, like flavored lubricant? Do you when I did buy that? a can of shooter lube to clean my rifle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah clean my rifle that's an interesting euphemism not a euphemism no what about so, a baldo i'm gonna go with no <laughs> even though i have you, no idea what, what do you not know what a baldo is no how no, do you even I'm, not know i don't know <laughs> but i'm pretty sure that if you're asking i don't want it so <laughs> oh by the way so you know i actually became a member of your little youtube thingy you did back. why <laughs> I was, bored. <laughs> oh my God. I was thinking, wow, well, I get some of those cool secret cooking videos or something. You know? Yeah, you technically do. I have to do, I have to do another one really soon. No, um, you know, I, 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 I did you and I did uh, Andrew uh, legal mindset. I'll probably do Joe next. You know. <laughs> have you ever like if someone's feet were cold have you ever sat on the feet or like inserted them under a butt cheek to warm up the feet of the other person? Not that I can remember. No. I mean, what would you say if someone said, uh, look, their feet were cold. So I lifted a cheek and I let them in. Like, what would you say to that person? Would that be I'd degenerate? Say, I, I, I'd say I got to go. Um, look at the time. <laughs> that was Drexel who said that. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. Drexel and I are Facebook friends. I, we, we, we correspond. Well, you talk about do. feet stuff with Drexel on Facebook. Is that what you into, just said? I'm not even going to get into those conversations. Uh, that, that's got to be privileged somehow. Um, but yeah, Ty regretting coming on now. Yeah, absolutely. I come on as a yeah, disaster, take full responsibility. Then I can listen to this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is penance. Toesley, yeah, speaking of feet, Toesley says, I have 20 Northern pesos for you, my man. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the Canadian doll, $20, which comes out to an American one gallon of gas. Phoenix Lord Asserman, I dig the art of war approach to leading your team, Ty. Sorry things went bad this time. I appreciate it. Mecca J, so there's really nothing else Vic can do. It's going to be annoying seeing the usual people cheering this decision act like a bunch of lunatics. I'm sure Vic will move on from this. Can't say the same for his hate group. Dude, here's the thing that you guys... Not all of you, but some of you should understand about these people. The same 30 people have been kvetching about this 
for the past three years because, and this is the critical part of this for three years, the only time they get interactivity and responses from anyone is when they talk about the case someone else is involved in. That's it. That's the only thing that gets them interaction on Twitter or whatever. That's why they go back to the well. When like, for example, me, I haven't really talked about this case in the past two years because nothing's happened. And it's just like, well, we're just playing a waiting game. So you talk about it for just a second. Say, hey, just, you know, someone says, what's up with the Vic case? I don't know. Waiting on the court of appeals. And then you wait and wait and wait. These mm -hmm. people go back to the well every couple months because they get lonely because they will never, ever be interesting. So this is their thing. Oh, yeah. So what? It like they couldn't do anything. They didn't make Vic's life worse than it already was. No, the people who they, destroyed it, Vic they did already not destroy did it. Him. They did not destroy him, and that was their goal. So they failed on that. We didn't get the complete, we didn't get the victory I would have liked, but they did we we did keep them from doing that. Now Vic deserves well, the, most of the credit for that, but I'm just saying. The yeah. uh but I, I'm talking about the people who not so my use of destroyed, I think, triggered you. But uh, yeah, yeah. There, there are people who damaged Vic. We're talking about the the defendants in the case and a couple other mm -hmm. people that are mentioned by the court. But oh, then there's you're talking this, about the law Twitter this, that shits. And yes, those, there's this yeah. group of orbiters around this thing. They can't and haven't harmed Vic. They're just these weirdos who talk about it because when they do, someone they talks back. So, so, so jealous. Because they know he's better than them in virtually every way that can be measured. And that's the thing, right? When y'all are talking about, oh, you know, these assholes are going to gloat. Let them, okay, fine. They're going to gloat. Would any of you guys trade places with those sad, pathetic fucks? I got it, invited to go on to I mean, Mike Dunford's stream. Uh, I'll just send you some pliers. You can pull your toenails out and get the same experience without having to waste the time. I thought about doing it, but his show is going to go on at the same time as mine. No, I thought it'd be God, funny no. to go I on there. I wouldn't take money out of my pocket, certainly. Yeah, that's true. If you could go on it, yeah, okay. I, gotcha. But no, guys, I mean, really, seriously, uh, they are all horrible, pathetic, miserable, worthless people. You know, so who gives a shit what they think? I, you know, I, I, let, them, let them have their moment. I mean, you know. I, I can't imagine an actual practicing attorney spending hours and hours every day on Twitter. That's just, you know, you ain't got no clients. <laughs> and if you don't have any clients, you're not a lawyer. I mean, that's, that's, hey, that's kind of the deal. Rude. Uh, no, you got clients. You got clients. <laughs> no, I do not. Well, you I, get some. Anybody who's my client right now is just waiting on a nine millimeter well, of the forehead. Yeah, get away, course, uh, stay back. I'll pepper spray you if you call me it, again. It, well, yeah, but I mean, you're like the number two, uh, you know, super chat guy on YouTube now or something. You had some accolade where you. I don't you? want to be. I don't want to be a practicing lawyer. Like no, no. Um, <laughs> that sounds yeah. like so much fucking work. And then it, sometimes you, I don't know if you heard this about lawyers that practice sometimes, but sometimes you lose cases and it's really shitty. No, I've never seen that happen. What, what must that be like? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, I wouldn't say that every, that, that the, the cause is completely lost. We have a few more punches to throw, but you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be clinical and say that, you know, the odds, the odds don't look good for us, but we're certainly going to try you know, I mean, that, that's, that's what you have to do at this, at this stage. And, uh, yeah, you know, it, it, but you know, the thing is best thing anybody can do is, you know, go to the convention, see Vic, you know, do the, do the autograph photo. You know, I'll, I'll tell, I'll tell a very mild, a very minor Vic story. And I, I, I don't think he would be offended. That I tell this, but this will tell you the kind of guy he is. I have a, a friend who's got an autistic son and his, this, this son is pretty seriously, you know, impaired, but he just loves Vic, you know, um, and just loves him. And so I called Vic on Christmas, the day before Christmas or something. And I said, Hey, would you, would you mind recording a, you know, a, a nice little Merry Christmas, so-and-so 
thing for him and send it to me. It, it would make his day. Fix it off course. And so uh, I, I get the video and it's not just a Merry Christmas. Yeah, it was like a good two or three minute, you know, just Merry Christmas. I hope you have a good thing, you know, and, and yeah, it made that kid's day. And I didn't pay him for that. I didn't, I mean, I, he, but he, he just, his response, of course he did. I mean, so, you know, these people that are gloating, they're gloating about, about damaging one of the better people I've known in my life, you know? And so they're, they're scumbags. Yeah. They're, they're, they're absolute garbage. Um, so, you know, let, don't, don't let your happiness be defined by what dumbasses do. Um, I think I would give that advice if I, to anybody. It's, it's, uh, uh unironically yeah. very, very good advice. Yeah. Um, it's hard to do. I, I can see that, you know, your yeah. sense of, your sense of, of justice is outraged. Uh, b- believe me. And, and maybe to some degree, this is that in that you know, category of do as I say, and not as I do. So I don't mean to, you know, you know uh, criticize anybody on that, but, um, so anyway, all right, I got one more for you, and then I'm going to kick you off, and I'll do the rest of the super yeah, chats. Yeah, otherwise, it, I'll never get done. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Joshua Vidrine says, "Ty, this is for you. Rough, ni- it's twenty dollars, but if you think I'm going to mail you a twenty dollar check, you're fucking wrong. Rough <laughs> night. Everyone's disappointed, but you fought a slippery battle that we can all learn from. Hoping to still see you here from time to time, talking wargaming and telling tales. You're a great man. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. appreciate the moral support." And of course, of course, Ty will be welcome back on the show. By the way, um, the first person that called me when the, when I sent the I sent a text out to several people telling them what happened. First person to call me was one of your uncles. Oh yeah, just to say, hey, are you, you okay? You know, you, you, so um, yeah, it's it's good to have friends in uh, in times of adversity, and and try to I would advise everybody try to remember that when you see your friends in times of adversity. Because even if you don't know what to say, sometimes just a, you know, hey, you okay? Or, you know, slap on the back, whatever. Uh, people, those that, that very often helps a lot more than we realize. So. Well, there you go. All right, man. Well, I'll bid you good night. Get off my show. And then I'll <laughs> uh, do the super chats and go to bed. <laughs> I'll do the rest of the super chats. I, I do have to be up uh, earlier than I want to tomorrow, yeah. which sucks. And then, um, and then we'll be, we'll be moving on. This uh, is closure though. Yeah. If I could say this uh, to everybody in the chat that has been, uh, you know, supportive, appreciate that more than you can know Uh, to your other gloating fuckers. Piss off. You're pathetic. (laughs) (laughs) You just are. And you know it, you you know it, we know it. So I don't know why, why, why you're even bothering, but whatever. All right, man. Well, Hey, you have a good one and uh, see y'all later in the chat. We'll, We'll see how things develop over the next few days. Talk to you soon, man. Okay, brother. Bye-bye. Peace. There we go. That was Ty Beard. Uh, and uh, as as kind of expected, you know, Ty blames himself for the, uh, for the entire thing. Doesn't throw anybody else under the bus. Um, whatever... Uh, Whatever anybody thinks of Ty, what I can say about him is he's a good man. He's an honest man and he's, uh, he's a stand up guy. He's, he's not the kind of guy to try and weasel out of, out of, uh, issues, responsibility or problems. And that's, uh, that's something.